Hey everyone, this is FixReef, and today we have a Castle A360X that came in with a problem that it sporadically shuts off. Sometimes it resets itself, turning off and then turning back on. Sometimes uh, it requires a power cycle to get it back on. So we're going to attempt to uh, take a look at what the problem is and uh, see if we can fix it. So buckle up, it's going to be fun. First of all, because it's not water damaged, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in first to see what kind of response I get. See if we can capture what the customer is saying this light, uh, the type of issue this light has. So to do so, I'll plug it into the uh, power supply, my lab power supply. Um, let's see, we have medium color, we have fairly high intensity, maybe keep it a little bit lower so that um, it's not going to be too much brightness. So I'm going to plug it in. And we'll see. Um, we'll see what we get. Power up, and right there, blinked, turned on. The fan is on. All is good. But it did blink initially, and there you go. On and off, on and off, on again, off again. And it keeps blinking and blinking and blinking. Okay, so we know we have the baseline. We know what um, what the problem looks like. Now let's take it apart, see what's inside, um, and find out if we can fix it. Okay, all of the parts are out. Uh, a little bit dusty, but not too bad. You can see that the, the entire board, except for the two um, mounting holes over here, is covered in um, uh, conformal coating. Conformal coating is great to prevent um, oxidation, splashing of salt causing problems, uh, but it's a major pain um, to deal with when you are doing repairs. So, um, okay, so let's see. This is also a little dusty. All right, so two-sided main board, um, the fan and the LED cluster on this end. There is nothing else going on here. Um, so first of all, when the light shuts off, um, are we getting any type of uh, current draw from this light? Because if there is still a smaller current draw going on, it means that the issue is with the uh, circuits, somewhere in the circuits of the um, actual LED channel control. This is the main controller. Uh, these are the circuits for each of the channels. So some could be somewhere there. However, if the light's not drawing any current whatsoever when it shuts off like this, then we have to start looking at the power circuit, which is a different circuit. Located, um, located over here, you can see a huge um, shunt resistor, which measures current um, across to know how much current is being produced. And this is the area of the, uh, of the power circuit. So I'm going to plug it in once again um, and watch the current consumption on my lab power supply. Very frequent blinking. And when it shuts off entirely, the current draw goes all the way down to zero, which indicates to me that this is a power uh, circuit problem. 
it goes all the way down to zero, especially for those longer stretches when it's off. All right, so we need to focus on the power circuit. Let's see what's, um, what the power circuit looks like. Okay, so the circuit is, uh, the power circuit is in this area. The, uh, there are a couple of components here. One is that shunt resistor that take that giveaway. This looks like a MOSFET, the main power MOSFET. And this area over here is the control circuit for, um, or control logic for the entire power circuit. I will explain this in detail as we go, but it is very important to know what this control uh, logic chip is. It is also fairly important to understand what's going on with the, uh, the MOSFET as we go. So let's look at it under the microscope, maybe clean this area up, remove conformal coating from this area, and uh, examine it in greater details. Okay, so in order to better appreciate this, let's clean up the dust. Um, it's very, the, the um, conformal coating layer is super thick here, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up. And yeah, we can't really see or read anything on here, so... Um, I'm going to go ahead and start and remove the conformal coating so it's easier for us to see what's going on. Okay, so now that both the MOSFET and the control uh, logic circuit is exp are exposed, um, we can start talking business. Um, okay, so basic concepts. The power comes in through the power supply. It has to go through this circuit to actually get to the rest of the logic. This circuit is essentially, um, it's called a circuit breaker for all kinds of issues that may occur with this light, which are not, um, you know, normal operation conditions for it. For example, if uh, more power is applied, more voltage is applied to the light than what it's supposed to take, I think it's about 19 volts, then it's going to shut off uh, at a certain threshold. If less voltage is applied, it will also shut off to prevent damage. If you reverse the polarity of the input voltage, it will shut it off safely without burning up. If, um, if the MOSFET is overheating because it's out of operating conditions that, that it can handle, it will also shut it off. For example, uh, if there is a short somewhere on one of the channels, uh, of the light, one of the LED channels of the light, uh, if that short is not controlled, this MOSFET would blow up. The circuit is designed to uh, detect that there is a short because there is a uh, there's this shunt resistor over here and it's measuring the current uh, again, uh, across the shunt resistor. And if the current spike is significant and fast, it's going to shut it off and prevent further damage. If there is a gradual increase, but higher than what it can is supposed to handle, uh, in this particular case, over five to six amps, it's also going to shut it off because it thinks that something uh, subtile is going on. So this circuit is responsible for a lot of shut off reasons for uh, for the main light. And we, this is what exactly what we see in the light. We see that the light shuts off when uh, sporadically when plugged in, um, and uh, in the entirety of the uh, the current consumption dies when it happens, which means that likely this controller over here shuts off this MOSFET to prevent further damage because there is an issue. So what we need to find out is, is the issue with one of the channels or is the issue with uh, the circuit itself that, it, that it's failing? Because it's entirely possible that the control circuit, control uh, logic over here is, is dead or is corrupt somehow needs to be replaced. It's entirely possible that the MOSFET itself is bad and needs to be replaced. It's also possible that one of the LED channels is shorted and it needs to be fixed as well. So uh, the MOSFET itself is fairly straightforward. It's a, it's a quite powerful MOSFET. Uh, you can see that there are four pins on each end of this MOSFET. There, is a, there are four pins up at the top here and there are four pins up at, down at the bottom. So these four pins over here would be the input. These three pins over here would be the output. And this is the gate of the MOSFET. The gate of the MOSFET is connected to one of the uh, pins on the control circuit. That pin over here essentially turns it on or off. It has the full control of this uh, of this MOSFET. Um, then it's got the again the current sensor logic off of this uh, resistor over here. So some of the pins are responsible for that. It knows how much power is being produced, so how much voltage coming out of the MOSFET you know, when it's on. Uh, so one of the, those pins is responsible for that as well. 
and um, and a few other a few other things. Um, so so this again this this particular controller is very 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 important. Um, so what I'm going to do now um, is I'm going to actually be, instead of guessing, as I don't really like those guessing games, I am going to hook this um, light to a rig where I will probe the uh, voltages uh, throughout this con connection and see if, uh, uh, if if what I observe may actually make sense or if it would explain the reason why the light shuts off. So to find out what actually is going on on the shut on the power up and then shut off, um, I have this test rig that has many different uh, probes going down to the control circuit connects to the little pins there, and uh, paired with an oscilloscope, we should be able to record voltages, drops in voltages, history of voltages across different pins, and then compare that to what we see in the data sheet for this control logic, and see if we can figure out the problem. So let's rock and roll. Okay, so this is where I captured the shot off sequence. Let me explain what I see on this um, on this capture. Yellow line is the power input. Blue line is the clock or the timer, I should say. Purple line would be the. Um, let's see what the purple line is. The purple line is vol uh, power at the gate of the MOSFET, and the darker blue line would be the um, power output of the MOSFET. So let's zoom in and see what happens. First of all, over here we can see that the timer went up immediately and then went down after a few milliseconds. So let's zoom in. So you can see that there is a ramp up for the timer, the light blue line, the, um, the, one, the second from, one from the top. And then as we keep zooming in right around here, we can see that the purple line, the gate line, went down first, followed by the darker uh, blue light, which is the output of the MOSFET. Okay, so what this tells me is the following. Right at this point, the power got cut off to the gate. So the power to the rest of the light got cut off as well, because once the gate went down, the uh, voltage at the output of the MOSFET went down as well, to zero. At the same time, voltage on the input remained pretty much the same. We don't have to worry about that. And at some point later, once the voltage at the output went down, the timer started showing the issue, the problem with the light, um, charging all the way up to the 4 volts or so. Um, it never reset itself, I don't think so. And uh, the power off cycle continues until I stopped capturing. Okay, so now to understand what is it that we saw in the uh, trace capture for uh, the voltages, let's take a look at the schematics of the um, power controller installed in the slide. Um, so this is the controller itself. It's got quite a few pins. Important ones would be uh, voltage input, that's the 19 volts coming in. Uh, voltage output, that's the 19 volts coming out. The gate pin, that's the gate that controls uh, the MOSFET, that's the MOSFET in the, um, in the schematics. Um, also, a sense pin, that's the, vol that's the current sensing across the uh, resistor, the shunt resistor. And uh, the timer over here. So in our um, uh, in our trace capture, we captured V in, V out, a gate voltage, and the timer voltage. Um, this is a long data sheet. You can read about all kinds of things in it. Uh, but a short story is that, among other things, uh, this controller will shut off the gate power to the MOSFET if it senses a problem. One of those problems is uh, if, say, for instance, uh, the current spike across the sense resistor occurs, or if uh, a voltage in 
output is not as strong as it should be or too much compared to what the um, uh, what the slide is supposed to handle. It also detects things like output voltage out of the, the MOSFETs, not the right voltage, um, and so on. And the timer is there to uh, kind of handle problems. If, for instance, the excessive current draw on the circuit uh, lasts longer than a few milliseconds, the timer will eventually get to the point where it charges the capacitor over here and gets up to about 4 volts. The moment it gets up to 4 volts, that's when the circuit shuts off. Uh, if it detects that there is no voltage output longer than a few milliseconds, same deal, it charges the capacitor, the capaci the, uh, and then the, that indicates to the circuit that uh, everything is to be shut off because there is a problem. Things like that. What we saw in the trace capture is that the timer was happy. It didn't uh, trigger before the gate shut off initially. In fact, what we saw is that the power output was cut. And then the timer uh, triggered. Power to the gate was off as well. Let's take a look at some of the fault cases for this uh, circuit. So here's an example of a normal power-up sequence. You can see that the voltage coming into the circuit is rising, gets up to the top, everything is stable. Point as long as everything is good, the gate charges as well, so the MOSFET is now conducting. Right at this point, the uh, power at the gate goes up. As the power at the gate goes up, the output voltage goes up, and the current consumption goes up as well. At the same time, the timer is still confused because it sees issues spiking here, which it's not supposed to see. As long as the output power and the current, output voltage and the current, reaches the limit before timer times out, then timer is happy again, and it's uh, going back down. At some point it goes back down, and this is where we enter normal operation. Now for faults, well actually, the generic definition of the fault is over here, like a restart circuit sequence, which is not available on, uh, on this type of light, by the way, but you can see that, say, for instance, there is a current load that got exceeded. That causes the timer to start rising. The moment it hits the limit, um, it, the moment the current hits the limit, and the timer m measures that limit and it's uh, fully charged to 4 volts, now the timer is going to cause the gate pin to go down and the power is going to be shut off. Again, not applicable to this slide, but we have later a sequence where after some time of inactivity, it will attempt to measure and restart uh, gate power to see if the issue went away. Um, more interesting fault cases are recorded over here. For example, here is a startup into short circuit. Power, let me zoom in. You can see that power in is always stable for the most part. Power at the gate is up, so this is where we, we are conducting perfectly well. Um, the current uh, spike occurs at this point over here. And as the current spike occurs, the timer starts uh, ticking. And uh, whenever the timer times out and the current uh, load is still too high, it shuts off the gate and shuts off the output power. Here is an example of a hot short. In the hot short example, the gate is conducting, everything is good, the power input is great. The current is going up gradually, eventually hits the limit. That causes the uh, gate to shut off right away. And uh, the power output goes down as well. So this gives you an idea of what this control circuit actually does when, um, when issues occur. However, what we see in, uh, the, in our trace capture is that the sequence is slightly different. The power to the gate gets cut off. The timer is happy, never causes any issues. Uh, once, since the power to the gate is cut off, the output of the MOSFET is cut off, the light is off, and otherwise no problems. I know that there is no current consumption, excessive current consumption occurs because I monitor it through other means. So the reason that the light eventually shuts off and never restarts is because the timer times out while the output voltage is, is low, because the MOSFET is never conducting. And 
uh, it never tries to restart. It eventually decides that, oh, well, there is a, there is a, there is a problem, so I'm just going to shut off the light and uh, let it be in that state until you restart uh, or reset the power to the light externally. So that's what we observed. All right, so we've learned quite a bit about the operation of this control circuit. And we know that there is somehow a problem that occurs that has nothing to do with current consumption. It has nothing to do with the control circuit shutting down the MOSFET because the timer times out. And the timer, remember, is the primary reason for most of the things shutting off, except for the immediate circuit breaker, I think. So, so this is um, the time when we theorize about what might be going on. And my leading theory right now is that it's either the control logic that's uh, bad or the MOSFET that's bad. I would argue that the first attempt would be to replace the MOSFET to see if the faulty MOSFET is causing uh, intermittent shutoffs. All right, first let's get a replacement MOSFET for the slide. I'll hand it here for now. Now let's get onto the microscope and uh, replace it. Replacing this MOSFET or taking the MOSFET off, I should say, is actually a fairly significant challenge. Primarily because, take a look at the brand new MOSFET to the right. See, all of the shiny surface is the surface that's going to be attached to the main board. That's for heat dissipation. It's very important that it's there. The problem is that currently, unleaded solder that has a significantly higher melting temperature is covering on the underneath this entire uh, uh, area. So getting it hot so that you know all of that solder melts and comes off is not an easy task. So it requires a lot of temperature, very high temperature, requires uh, precision tools. It's, uh, um, it's not an easy task. Let's tackle it. Let's see if we succeed. Just in case, although not strictly required, I'm going to put a little bit of flux on both ends where uh, the pins are slightly exposed. Let's have it ready for liftoff. And it's off. All right, let's see what we found inside. Um, all of this looks fairly good, fairly clean. Um, I'm not seeing any shorts in, anywhere across um, across the pins, so that's pretty good. That's good. Now we can go ahead and clean up the area. Okay, so all of that uh, unleaded solder is now gone. Remove old flux, make it nice and shiny. Perfect. Now I'm going to put some fresh leaded solder. It's going to be much easier to install things that way. A little bit more flux and this is important because we're going to put a very dry very fresh um, MOSFET on top of this it's super important to be able to um, have a good bond now the new MOSFET is going in it's supposed to go in this way just like that
All right, I see solar starting to come out from underneath. That means that it's mostly in place. I think this MOSFET is on. Let it cool off a little bit. Um, clean up. Right now, everything is super hot. Now, in addition to uh, the MOSFET, I decided to try to replace the um, main controller as well, in case that's causing issues. Okay, the old controller is gone. Carefully clean up the area. This is pretty good. Some fresh solder. Here's our brand new controller. Need a bit of flux. One final cleanup. All right, now it would be a good time to test. Do initial testing anyway. Let's give it some power. The light is on. It's eating up less than an amp. The fan is on. I just bumped the intensity up. Let's give it about half an amp. The fan is on, the light is on, it's working. I'm not going to do anything else with this light for now until I test it. It's going to run like this, partially disassembled with no conformal coating. 
uh, for several hours while I'm doing other repairs to make sure that it's not going to fail again. Uh, hopefully this is fixed. If you do not see um, anything else, if this is the end of the video, you know that the light is fixed. Hopefully this was the last attempt. It was a very fun, interesting, challenging project to fix because of all of the different things that were going on here in the complexity of the circuit. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.